get out of everyone. Look, look who I'm with. Hi, Yay. I'm back, sort of. Sort of grabbing Eva before she travels up to uh, the Sunshine Coast. I know, moving to Queensland, Sunshine. Yay. Yeah, but thought we'd uh, catch up, have a chat, and thought, hey, look, what we also do is make videos. So we do. let's let's um, have a talk on a a topic, a hot topic. Grr. And there was one this week, uh, an article that got published that got a lot of people talking as dealing with the issue of sex work and how it should be treated. And it was written by one uh, Melinda Tankard Reist. Which just seeing her byline on an article makes me not want to read it because I know what it's going to have in it. Yeah. But I did read it. Yes. And I wish I hadn't read it because it's everything that I, I hate about this woman put onto paper and given a voice to, to millions of people to read and possibly think that she knows what she's talking about, which she doesn't. Yeah, I have to admit, uh, the thing that bugs me most about her, and I've read a lot of things she's written, and she's, she is one of those people who takes opinion and pretends it's irrefutable fact, and mm. she will actually lie. She's been caught out repeatedly point blank lying yeah, about Yeah, she makes things. up numbers, she makes up statistics, and she also glosses over you know, innumerable parts of fact to make her point, and mm. it's it's dangerous. Yeah. In simple fact, in simple terms, she's one of the people who believe uh, sex work, prostitution, should be illegal, uh, shouldn't be allowed to do it. Any kind of sex work, whether it's pornography or mm. stripping or working as a sex worker, uh, anything within that industry, she, she believes should be banned, made illegal, and her reasoning for it is, you know, it's sort of this kind of moralistic save the women uh, crusade. Not quite realising that so many of us, we actually don't want or need saving. Yeah. We actually don't. Like, stop. Go away. Don't one, rescue me. One thing I've learned from Twitter, uh, because I've found there's a lot of people in Australia who work in various facets of what you could call the sex industry, whether it's escort work, uh, porn, stripping, all these things. What I've learned is do not tell people engaged in sex work what their life is and whether it's good <laughs> or bad. And you know, though, something else that I've learned from Twitter and following a lot of people who work in all jobs and all industries and all aspects of life, Work can be a bit shit. Not everybody loves their job. Yeah. Not everybody wants to be there. Everybody just has to kind of go to work. So this is something that kind of we, we kind of forget about when we talk about the exploitation of sex workers and, and how bad the industry is. You just have to take the word sex out of it. I, mm. Andrew says this all the time. You take yeah. the word sex out of it, just put industry or worker, and you're going to find these sort of things happening in all facets. Every single argument I've ever heard against sex work remains as true if you take sex out of the mm. sentence. It's like, women are exploited at work. Yes, they are. They're generally paid less. They're generally given less uh, respect and authority. You know, women are exploited at work. Yes, they are. Uh, women or men are trafficked for this industry. Yes. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, if we were to really talk about trafficking and and you know, all that sort of thing, because this is the difference. Sex work and sex trafficking are completely unrelated. Mm. And it's exactly the same as saying that somebody who's been, you know, brought in as an illegal immigrant from overseas, had their passport taken away and, and forced to work in, you know, hotels as cleaners. And yeah. people are, you know, under the table workers in cafes that are exploited and paid less and given no respect and no anything. So we're going to ban restaurant industry yeah. and the hotel industry and all this, you know, you can't just have this blanket... Uh, sort of a, a accusation on this industry without actually knowing anything about the industry and this is where the anger comes from on my side is that I don't think that Melinda Tankard Rest has ever actually spoken to a sex worker who who has the the positive side of, of the story she she quotes people who are unhappy and that's fair enough you know people are unhappy and in, in all work, walks of life but there are two sides. And, and in sex work, there are a hundred million sides. Every day is different. Yeah. And the whole idea of you need new laws to stop trafficking. Uh, no, you don't, because trafficking of humans is illegal. Yeah, there are already laws in place. You don't need to write new laws. You don't have to regulate the sex industry in thinking that will stop trafficking, because 
it probably won't even slow it down. You need to go and attack building sites if you want to stop human trafficking, uh, particularly in Europe and the US, but also in Australia. You raid any large building site, you're going to find it full of undocumented workers. It's a scam and they're All exploited. very much in danger of their lives because, you know, they're unsafe workers, they're putting in unsafe uh, situations mm. they're paid less they have no legal uh recourse if something goes wrong because they don't have any uh, australian citizenship mm. or working visas you know i mean you can really just have to take the word sex out of it yeah. and look at and look at work practices everywhere and when you think about that sex work and the sex industry is 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 completely different to the the trafficking side of things yeah. and yeah. so the the argument doesn't actually work. Yeah, I mean, I think by all means, put harsher penalties on people guilty of trafficking. You've got my 100% support, mm. whether they're trafficking sex workers, construction workers, domestic workers, uh, uh, service industry workers. Any, anyone who's illegally bringing people in or exploiting people and putting them in the workplace illegally. Man, chuck them in jail, throw away the key. You're not going to get any argument from me. Mm. But this... It is probably my, my biggest problem with this uh, anti-sex work argument is the innate dishonesty because none of their arguments are just about the sex industry. So really, you come back to, honestly, you just find the idea of people buying and selling sex squicky. Yeah, it's a bit icky. Ooh. It's like, and that's it. And that's your problem. And that's your honestly. opinion, but it's not overall fact. Mm. And, you know, the thing that's really upsetting about this article that, that uh, she's written is that she is sort of pushing for what, what uh, is known as the Swedish model, the Nordic model for sex work, which basically makes sex work illegal to, to purchase. So it doesn't, it, it's this sort of twisted thing that the girls are not, uh, and the, or the workers, the men and women who are sex workers, are not breaking the law. But the people who seek their services are breaking the law and so you know so, so it's sort of this idea of well if we stop people buying sex mm. and make that illegal then the whole problem will go away and the women will be you know mm. less exploited there it's actually so dangerous it yeah. it pushes it further underground it makes you know the the say uh, a, a client going to see a sex worker who knows he's now doing something completely illegal and can lose everything he has because he's doing this well, he's not going to go somewhere safe Really, it's gonna. It's it's really, gosh, it's unsafe. You know, mm. it's <laughs> there are so many problems with it. There are problems with uh, just the the moral idea of it as well. Shaming people for wanting to have sex in any aspect is mm. is ridiculous and yeah. dangerous and damaging. And it's ignoring history. It's this: we're going to make sex work go away. Yeah, like they made alcohol go away. How they've made pot go away all these wars on on you know these kind of icky parts of life that people don't seem to want to you know yeah, yeah it it creates the the mob the cartel the yeah. organized crime all comes from when you try and suppress something and you try and make something that people kind of want you know illegal yeah or criminal you, you're just going to push it underground people yeah. are still going to do it I, I would basically challenge anyone to find any period in human history, any culture, where sex wasn't traded as a commodity in some form. It's human nature. The, and, and the whole idea, like, if we introduce this punitive law where the clients are criminals and we can bust them, that ignores two things. It's first, it's pretending there was no prostitution, there was no sex work before there was. And the second thing is, you're ignoring the fact that there are women and men who, on balance, when they look at their options, their preferred option, they would like to work as a sex worker. Mm. Of course, yes, they are exploited. There are people who absolutely don't want to, who are trapped. And as we said, that's true of any job. I never liked my office job, okay? I never, not for one day, did it because I liked it. I did it to <laughs> earn money, okay? It's as simple as that. And, you know, that's right. People are going to do that uh, in, in any job. You know, you do. You have to, you know, make your choice that's to pay your bills, to look after your family, to do all, to, to do all that. And you can't just take one part of that and say, well, this is wrong. But everything else, you know. Personally, 
you know, when I think about people who are exploited and doing jobs that are horrible and doing jobs that, you know, you're only doing just for the money and you go home and you just want to forget all about it. I think of things like cleaning septic tanks and, um, you know, I've got a friend of mine who does a, a really hard job of going in to crime scenes and collecting bodies. That is a full on emotional, disturbing, hard job to do. And yet, you know, it's, I'm, I'm doing something that's, that's exciting for me and fun for me and, and exciting and fun for the people I'm with and I don't get depressed over it and I don't, you know, and yet I, I need to be rescued and saved because somehow I am not in control of my own choices. Yeah, so really, this problem, if you're going to argue it against sex work, at least be honest mm. about it and saying, I just think sex is not a thing that you should buy or pay for. And you know what, if you do not want to pay for sex and go out and buy it, if you don't want to sell sex, that's so cool, don't. Mm. But <laughs> don't, don't all, all the other arguments about saving and it. protecting and exploiting, those aren't your real arguments because those are all true in every job, in every industry in the world. Your problem is with sex, mm. okay? Admit it, and at least I'll still disagree with you, but at least you'll have <laughs> at least the you're strength being honest. of telling the truth. Yeah, it makes me feel uncomfortable. That's mm. okay. I won't work in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> More loss for you is all <laughs> I'm saying. But I think when it comes to sex workers and it comes to writing about sex workers and talking about the job and talking about what it is that we do or are involved with or have to put up with or any of that, the people who are the, the, the biggest shouters of anti... I don't think they ever talk to sex workers. You know, they talk for us and they talk at us, but they never talk to us and they never listen to us. And that's the issue. That's the problem. Yeah. Talk to us. We're, so, we're smart. Yeah. Be positive and you might get a positive <laughs> outcome is what we're saying. Yes. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little rant. Yay. We enjoyed doing it. <laughs> And we'll see if we can come up with some more before Eva goes away. Oh, no. so you can but if, more. If, if I do go and you don't see me again, thanks for watching. It's been awesome. And we'll <laughs> see you all later. Bye.